Anna Sabachka Shostak was born in 1883 in the village of Skopci in the Barshanivka district of Poltava Oblast, now Vasilinivka, Kiev Oblast. From 1910 to 1916, Hanna Sabachka worked as an embroiderer in an art tale of decorative art in Skopci under the guidance of an outstanding artist Evgenia Pribilska. Pribilska played a significant role in the fight of many folk masters, whose work are now admired not only in Ukraine but also abroad. Of Russian origin, Evgenia lived in Ukraine from her youth. She studied at the Kiev Art School under the renowned Ukrainian artist Petro Levchenko, and from 1908 to 1910 she delved into old Ukrainian art. She made sketches from 18th century fabrics and embroideries from the treasuries of St. Sophia Cathedral and the Kiev Pchersk Lavra, the city museum and private collections. The Poltava Provincial Zemstvo commissioned her to sketch carpets as well. In October 1910, a landowner Semigradova invited Evgenia Pribilska to organize an art-directed textile workshop at Skopsi village. Hanna Sabachka quickly drew Prebilska's attention with her innate sense of color and embroidery skills. Hanna Sabachka's original paper compositions found a unique style and language, influenced by the vibrant avant-garde search for decorative ornamentation by Evgenia Prebilska. An outstanding Ukrainian avant-garde artist, Alexandra Exter, remarked on Hanna Sabachka's work noting the freshness and brightness that defined the spirit of the Slavic peoples who had embraced them from the East. In Sabachka's initial works, one can observe her evolving artistic style. Her early decorative panels on paper, such as Awakening and the First Flowers, embody Ukrainian decorative wall painting traditions, featuring a Tree of Life image, central to Ukrainian folk art. The compositions typically showcase a stark white backdrop, reminiscent of a house's white walls, with a prominently placed large flower central to the design, surrounded by an arrangement of other floral elements. Alongside these traditional pieces, Sabachka began experimenting with new forms, influenced by Evgenia Pribilska. These works exhibit unique outlines and dynamic curves in their floral and faunal motifs displaying a modernist approach to individual elements of nature rather than nature as a whole. Constructing compositions with dominant color spots and whimsical flowers of varying sizes and shapes, Sobachka Shostak's artworks, replacing symmetry with dynamic balance, were philosophical-psychological in its nature and resonated with the era she lived in. In her painterly decorative fantasies, she deconstructed and reassembled flowers, adding petals that transformed into birds, insects, fish, fantastical creatures, and sometimes humans. She created a spectacle of colors and ornamental elements on paper, reminiscent of ancient ornaments. Sabachka Shostak's works, initially as embroideries based on Prebilska's designs and later as independent pieces, stitchings, dollies, and decorative panels were shown at exhibitions in Kiev and St. Petersburg in 1913, Moscow in 1915 and 17, Paris in 1914, and in the 20s in Kiev, Kharkiv, Poltava, and internationally in Prague in 1922, Berlin, Dresden, Munich, Moscow, and Paris. After the revolution, Hanna Sabachka's works, alongside other renowned folk artists like Ivan Honchar, Vasil Dovhoshia, and Ivan Pshechenko, were showcased during the May Day celebrations in 1919 in Kyiv at the Contemporary Creativity of the Ukrainian Village exhibition. This event, the first of its kind for folk art in Ukraine under Soviet rule, were organized by the Section of Applied Arts of the Art Department at the Education and Propaganda College of the Kyiv Council of Workers' Deputies. Sabachka's works were displayed in a separate hall. Between 1922 and 27, the Kyiv exhibition toured major cities in Germany. In 1931, Hanna Sabachka was invited to participate in the decoration of the Ukrainian pavilion at the All Union Agricultural Exhibition in Moscow, despite not having formal artistic education. For her contribution, she was honored with the title Master of Folk Art of the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic and was admitted to the newly established Union of Artists of the USSR. 
In 1932, Hanna Sobachka-Shostak, at the behest of Evgenia Pribilska, relocated with her family to the settlement of Cherkizova in the Pushkin district of the Moscow region. There she worked as an artist at the Export Nabift Kine factory. In this artel, Hanna Shostak first worked as an ordinary painter and then as a sampler. On the basis of the artist's drawing approved by the Art Council, she would make samples according to which the artel workers painted linen fabrics. Finished products, scarves, carpets and shawls were exported to America and England, where they were in great demand. In 1936, Hanna Sabachka's artwork was displayed at the Republican exhibition of Ukrainian folk art in Kyiv, which was also showcased in Moscow and Leningrad. Sabachka served as a mentor to young Ukrainian folk artists at the Central Experimental Workshops set up for preparing the first Republican exhibition of folk art. A notable discovery of the exhibition was Sabachka's student Paraska Vlasenko, who would later surpass her teacher in popularity. Vlasenko's work was featured on the cover of a special issue of the influential Soviet magazine Tvorchestvo, dedicated to the 1936 Ukrainian folk art exhibition. Vlasenko's style, reminiscent of Sabachka's yet more realistic, became emblematic, particularly as modernism was outlawed in the USSR at that time. Despite the harsh criticism in Tvorchestvo against Sabachka, accusing her of avant-garde affiliations and the ongoing repressions that targeted Ukrainian artists like Mikhailo Boychuk, Sabachka managed to avoid persecution. Furthermore, for her contributions to Ukrainian folk art and her role in the 1936 exhibition, she was one of the first to be honored with the title Master of Folk Art of the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, receiving a first-degree diploma and a monetary prize. Following the example of his mother, Hanna Sabachka's son Ivan Shostak became a decorative artist. In his original works, he gave complete freedom to his imagination. His paintings are distinguished by their boldness and richness in the depiction of fantastic colors, complex patterns that form a whole world in which people coexist with their recognizable household items, animals and birds. For a short time in the 1930s, Hanna Sabachka found herself in the shadow of her talented student Paraska Vlasenko, who was less compromised in the eyes of the Soviet leadership. However, in the long run, it was Hanna Sabachka who eventually became a legendary name in Ukrainian art. A unique mix of avant-garde and folk art, the musical rhythm of Sabachka's compositions fascinates and inspires experimentation. The work of this artist clearly demonstrates how precarious and artificial the boundaries between decorative, applied and so-called high art actually are and how productive the dialogue between folk and professional practices can be. Sabachka Shostak is the first of four artists we talk about in this series of lectures. Her fate is the least tragic, but this well-being is also very relative. A huge role in the study of Hanna Sabachka's work was played by the Ukrainian-Soviet playwright, journalist and art critic Grigory Mestechkin. He worked an article for the artist's first large catalog published in the year of the artist's death, in 1965. He also brought a large collection of her works from the Moscow region and donated it to the Kyiv Museum of Folk Decorative Arts. In his 1965 book, Mestechkin vividly describes Hanna Sobachka's move to a small village of Cherkizova in 1931, where she was destined to live for the rest of her life. The local collective farm allocated an old village house with a total area of 18 square meters for Hanna, her husband, and their three children. But Hanna was not at loss. According to Ukrainian traditions, she painted the hut's stove with fantastic ornaments and decorated house with embroidery and drawings. She was loved in her new homeland, but until the end of her life, she was perceived as a foreigner. In Soviet times, it was customary to russify Ukrainian names. Hanna in Russian would be changed to Anna. However, Sabachka Shostak remained a Hanna for her colleagues and fellow villagers until the end of her life. In the first years after moving to Russia, she did not know how to speak or write Russian at all.